or with us, members of labor, the boss program. We who sit at the head table have heard it. Thus, apart from other places, we've heard it five times so far in this room. So I suppose that qualifies any of us to do the delivery. We will not. Between the Prime Minister and Dr. Greenwich, they will be the main spokespersons. You will have your opportunity to make your inputs, to ask your questions, make your comments, have your queries explained um, in, due to, in due course. I am Edwin O'Neill, the president of the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations of Barbados. And to my immediate left is my co-chair, Senator Tony Moore, General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union. Like all good trade unionists, we would want to invoke the blessings of the Almighty on our proceedings. And to this end, I now invite Canon Van Isaacs to uh, lead us in our devotional moment. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and for this these moments to come to share and to learn. We pray your blessing on our nation at this time as we go through this crisis of COVID-19, as we go through the various social, political, and economic crises that face our nation as a result of the pandemic. We pray for the leaders of the trade union movement as they are called to make difficult decisions and to give guidance to their membership. We pray for the government, for our prime minister, all the members of cabinet who are charged at this time also with making difficult decisions in the interest of our nation. Give them wisdom and understanding and guidance so that in good faith, they will make the best decisions at this time. We pray for members of the public service who are being challenged also to make decisions that might be difficult or painful, we ask them, ask you to give them the courage to do what they think is right. At this time, we pray for peace in our nation and peace in the world, for good relationships, and we pray that in all that we do, we may seek to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And I hope that you feel blessed. Uh, this, like I said earlier, this is the fifth session. And we expect that in the audience are all categories of public officers, staff of the state owned enterprises whether they are critical or technical, uh, the sugar industries and staff association, members of the National Union of Public Workers, members of the Barbados Workers Union, and members of Unity Trade Union. Uh, so there is something that we all have in common. The Prime Minister will be here um, she is now engaged in other prime ministerial duties. 
but we have the authority to commence the meeting since Dr. Greenwich is going to be the main presenter. Uh, but before he speaks, I invite my co-chairman, Senator Tony Moore, to make a few remarks. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the session where we will spend most of our time, we hope, hearing from you, hearing your questions, your comments, um, your advice to us once you have secured a better understanding of the program that is being proposed for public servants. So we are asking you and encouraging you that no question is a question that is too simple to occupy the attention of those who are in a position to respond on any and every concern that is presented to us. So without much further ado, welcome again, and we should want at this time to be getting into the presentation of the BOSS program. Um, just, just before the presentation, uh, housekeeping, the Gymnasium Limited, they've got some rules and some advice. So please pay attention whilst those instructions are given. Thank you. I now invite Dr. Greenwich. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for coming and giving us this opportunity to present the BOSS program. And um, the head table, um, the chair mentioned, co-chair, that they have heard it at least five times. And so I'm sure they're tired of hearing my voice. I've heard it more than five. <laughs> <laughs> But the good news is that they can always fill in and answer any other questions that you may miss, etc. But uh, we are willing to present as long as persons have answers, questions to be asked, and want to understand intricate details. So we get in with, by, with the presentation, and then afterwards we can take any questions that you may have. 
Um, allow me to share my screen with you so you can see the presentation. presentation on the road. Um, all right, so just making sure we're all here for the same program, the BOSS program. Um, it's after that, so I try to be as lighthearted as possible to keep your attention. So the BOSS program, Barbados Optional Savings Scheme. And I must say from the start, you have heard it in different forms. Um, perhaps before you heard four savings, then you heard meeting turn, and now you hear optional savings scheme. And like any good economic program, it always, or any program, any plan, anything you come up with, the final product is usually um, the results of many iterations on that with the input of many persons. As so we arrive at a product that is really well put together and will have reflected large input from the union and your union representatives, particularly to ensure that the option of uh, the, 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 the feature of optional is really what it is, optional. So let me begin by saying why why do we why are we doing this program at this moment? Why now? What is driving it? And if I could summarize it in two words, it'd be COVID pandemic. It's all occasion and part of our response to the COVID pandemic that's upon us and the rest of the world. What I mean by that, you see a chart I have put up here. Prior to the COVID, at the, we, the Barbados, we were on track with our BERT program, which is in its coming to its end of the second year of implementation. I will achieve a number of milestones which you will hear during the course of my presentation and particularly has stabilized our revenues and the revenues were on track again to projected to be about 3.1 billion. But along came COVID and because of that, we expect to lose 400, 450 to $500 million in, in, in revenues, directly because of COVID. As those taxes and fees related to tourism and other parts of the economy that rely on tourism just disappear. And you know, Babi is totally tourism dependent like most Caribbean countries. About 45% of our economic activity and close to what you see in terms of jobs about 60% of the reserves that we get depend on tourism. So you can imagine the impact as we get zero tourism from April right down to December. But at best, most optimistic estimate we're working with 15% in GDP economic activity, and you see the large hit on the, the uh, revenues. At the same time, from as early as March, GABA had to step up its response to identify, contain, treat all um, COVID um, events and mitigate the spread of it. And you will see from the setup of the quarantine center at, the, at um, Harrison's Point, and other polyclinics, ensuring quarantine facility areas, uh, upgrading and refurbishment of those um, polyclinics, buying more medical. Uh, and supplies and equipment for the hospital, polyclinics, drug service, and things like that. And that stepped up program would make government expansion increase. And at the same time, government also, as the pandemic become more entrenched in the world, and by extension, the pandemic featured um, country lockdown and persons stay at home you find that more persons become unemployed. And government support 
for the household to make sure persons are taken care of, etc. Government allocated about four or five million of its expenditure to household survival program. Impulsive. Please allow me to announce the arrival of the Prime Minister Barbados, the Honourable Mayor Amor Motley. Thank you, <laughs> Dr. Greenwich. <laughs> you may continue. Thank you very much. So on, on that, on one hand, government will have stepped up. It's, it's a, a response to support and help with those household um, individuals who were directly impacted by the um, COVID. And I mentioned 45 million were allocated to those folks. And that includes a 40% increase in the welfare um, support to their clientele, at least $600,000 $600 to well, 2,000 vulnerable families who were impacted by it. You have known of the Adopt the Family program, which is really a, a, a resounding success to help us take care of those around us. And just supplementary support to NAS. That's on the, on, uh, in terms of individuals' household. But also on the business side, government also stepped up in order to help in time of COVID because it's much difficult to start a business that have gone out and closed because of the current recessions when the economy picks back up than it is to help a business to just hunker down and remain stable and then pick back up. And so many support have been given in that area and allocated. You know about the $200 million tourism facility that allowed hotels to take this opportunity to refurbish and improve their product and prepare for when um, tourism comes back. <clears throat> you know, you will further the 40 million VAT fund allowing businesses in terms of cash support to be able to borrow against past um, VAT filings. Um, in, you've known business forego can postpone NS payments, etc. And various support including fast-tracking private sector projects in order to provide some economic activity outside of the, what is being impacted by the tourism, by, by the absence of tourism due to the pandemic. So this step-up response, and if you would have um, noticed, uh, well, I have mentioned the Prime Minister two recent budget um, presentations, about one to one and a half percent of GDP, 100, 150 million has already been stepped up. And so the capital program had advanced already in support of um, the response to the response to the pandemic. <clears throat> but as this thing drags on longer and longer, the pandemic, this external shock, we've seen an, an, a, a tremendous increase in the claims at NAS, south for 41,000 claims. Now, these are not bodies, physical persons, but nonetheless, we represent a large, if you even assume it's about 25,000, almost a third of our labor force. And so government have a responsibility, in fact, take up the challenge to try and come up with a program that will mop up some of that extra, that continue, um, loss in jobs, try to provide some areas of economic activity that persons can find employment, and try to do it in areas that are not necessarily related to tourism. So that when the when and, and this will help drive economic activity in such a way that when tourism comes back and we work opens up and we're ready to go, we will be well on the way to just continue rolling. Um, and we estimate that we need about 100 million to 110 million in fiscal space. And this this capital expense will be directly tourist. We're talking things that that government can do outside of tourism, like paint and refer schools that were already in program to be done, but you need to bring forward fixing government buildings, refurbishing those, and painting down. Uh, we're talking about road construction. We're talking about um, fixing the markets, fish market, etc. work that has to be done, um, beautification, debushing, the sanitation program, things that we can get out there and get going on the capital side that are not directly related, uh, related to tourism to 
in order to ease the pressure on NIS and take up some of the soak up some of the employment. So we're talking about 100 to 110 or so million dollars in fiscal space. <clears throat> now, let me explain. I know you didn't come for a class in economics, so it's, it's going to keep it as simple and real as it can. What we mean by fiscal space? Now, what I do not mean, what we don't mean by fiscal space is financing. There are differences. At this moment, it's not that government is trying to get additional financing to do anything. It's trying to get space. Now, let me tell you what I mean by financing. Financing is the money that government got available to do stuff. And why is here we are not impressing the financing at this moment? It's because if you recall at the start of the board program, I know people will be keeping personal day as we move along. We had 420 million at Central Bank in reserves. I'm zero in government deposits at the Central Bank. Which is about three weeks, three to four weeks of import cover. Meaning that if we didn't get any more reserves, foreign reserves from any activity, we could survive and import up to three to four weeks. Which is a devastating, a devastating image if you can think of it, because almost everything we consume or uh, do in this country, including inputs for production, are imported. So without reserves, we really the exchange rate gone and we really can't, we don't want to picture that. Today, we have $1.7 billion in reserves. More than just about 20 weeks or 21 weeks of import cover. In addition, today, we went, Barbados went to the IMF board with the fourth review of the BERT program to assess how we've been doing, the targets, etc. And we have been successful at that, meaning the IMF endorsed what we've been doing so far in terms of keeping, keeping true to our homegrown developed BERT program, and also endorsed where we're looking to go and our response to COVID. Not only COVID, but beyond COVID, because you can respond to a crisis in such a way that it makes you unsustainable coming out of it. So because of, the, of that, our program has been work program, and this phase has been once again approved, meaning that we get our usual disbursement of 49 million US dollars. And because of our program we relate to COVID, we get another 90 million US dollars. So that's 140 million US dollars, 380 million Barbados dollars, add that to 1.7 billion, and we have hit the 2 billion US dollar tar um, reserve target. Like for like measure, never reached before in the history of Barbados, which means we bought roughly 24, 25 weeks of import cover. Now picture that. And so then when I say we don't need financing, now you can see what and the government deposits, which part of that, which is that the central bank also will have increased significantly. Now picture that. Yes, that means that if we were at where we were at the beginning of the program with 420 million, what we expect to lose now because of, of the COVID in terms of loss of earnings from tourism is about $700 million. And seven don't go into four very well. So if we had that reserve, I, I don't know sure what we would do. But now seven going to two billion better. Which means even if we lose reserve, we still have enough cushion to do what we need to do. So it's not an issue of financing. But what is the issue of space, fiscal space? Now to explain it, imagine that you have a 40 foot container. I will explain why 40 foot soon. But imagine you have a 40 foot container. And in that container, you put everything you have to spend, all the different categories. For you, the household, for me, you, well, that would be your mortgage, or food bill, or utilities, light rent, I mean, light electricity, uh, phone. We will put in that, any other hair purchase, payments you got, stuff for the kids, anything you spend has to go into that container, right? But suppose you're the Bill Gates of Barbados, and you have all the money in the world outside the container. The only restriction is that anything you spend has to go in the container, that 40 foot container. That's a fiscal space. So in order for you to spend on one area more, let's say you want to spend more in terms of, um, I don't know, the food bill or some other expense, you have to reduce expenditure in another area or save something. That's, your, that's the, the position we're in. We lost four to five hundred. We are losing four to four hundred fifty to five hundred million dollars in reserves, 
and we want to make sure that our fiscal is prudent and remain on track, so we don't want to go and widen the fiscal beyond what we can sustain. And therefore, expenditures, is, there's a space that I've allocated for our expenditure. That's our fiscal space. That's our container. And in there, we have wages and salaries. We have all the expenditure that goes in service, and we're working on that, reducing that where we can. We have other expenditures that ministries can do, and we're going through a whole review of the, of the estimates that was last presented to reprioritize and refocus them and repart, uh, in the right direction. But wages is part of it too. So when we look at wages, we are saying, if we can save a small portion from wages, but here is the trick. You can't save from the wages. By cutting, by cutting wages, that's not, you can't do that. Your objective is to maintain wages. And you can't save by wages by laying off persons. Your objective is to maintain employment. But if we could find a way to cut from wages, the actual amount we pay out, then we could put that into the capital part of the, of the fiscal space container and get the jobs and, and, and growth going areas that we need. So how can we do that? Everything in my fiscal space container, my 40 foot container, I record as a cash expenditure. If I spend cash, it got to go in there. When we paid wages last year, we paid in central government $806 million. So in my fiscal space container, I have $806 million. For the coming year, that's probably why I expect to spend two as cash. But if we could pay a small portion of that, let's say 10%, for argument say it's $100 million, is a bond. All of a sudden, the actual cash has been reduced by 100 million, so it's 700 and something million. And I don't have space because I don't record the bond in the fiscal space container, in my 40 foot container. That is in another container, that is in my debt container for me to deal with another time. And I gotta watch that too. But in my phys fiscal space container, I have now created 100 million in space that I can now channel, channel into the capital expenditure. You know what I'm saying? So it's not an issue of financing, it's an issue of space. Now, another way to look at this, which should be not prudent, which is what you don't want to do, because similarly to perhaps what was done after the 2000, 2008, 2009 crisis, it suggests not focus and spend as you want. And therefore, instead of getting a 40 foot content, you decide to build a wider content of 60 foot. But while well, it might look good at first, the problem is your fiscal house is no longer in order. You're not being prudent anymore. And when the crisis is up, you will be into commitments and things that you cannot come back from easy. And therefore, you don't want a position. The beautiful thing is expanding the capital direction within the container parameters we have is that projects have a finite life. They will soak up employment. When tourism pick back up, then those persons will be able to go back to regular and we will continue that way. So that's what we mean by fiscal space. So what we came up with had to service the dual objective of one, creating fiscal space, and two, maintaining employment in the public sector without cutting, without cutting, without cutting salaries. So you, have, you may repeat the dual objective. Create $100 million in fiscal space, i.e. By, by, by paying part in bonds, and maintaining employment in that sector, in the public sector. The, the beautiful thing, so by paying part in bonds, we achieve both the objective. In addition to that, we adhere to the, to, to the very fundamental principle that we, that Bayesian, the Bayesian principle, we take care of our brothers and sisters and those around us. By a worker now opting to say, give me part of my salary as a bond, and we taking that money and putting it into capital, he or she is providing employment opportunity for his neighbor, his sister, his brother, people around us, people we don't know, fellow Barbadians to find employment to earn a living and help withstand this COVID. So it has these principles. Now, the diagram here tries to pick, give you a picture view of it. The one on the left, the worker works and gets their full salary. A check, cash going down to the bank in Broad Street or the credit union um, saying, here's your full salary for that month. That will have happened in January, in February, in March, May this year, June coming. But we are proposing that from July, 
what on the right will happen. Your worker will still get their full salary, a truth, a number one truth, no salary cut, a full salary. However, they will get it in two pieces. The large portion, roughly 90%, I will show you the amounts that we, we propose to convert, will be given as cash directly to your deposit, wherever you usually get your, your, um, your, your, cat, your salary. And a small portion, say 10% of what we give as a bond. In the same time, and that will be going to your bond account now at the central bank. So you will know, the worker will now have a bond account and a deposit account where they usually get their money. They still get the full salary. But here is the beautiful thing. The bond account is not in my fiscal space container. So I, by, by that, government frees up that additional space to achieve the objective of the boss program, right? So let me give you, let me, so before I give you an example, let's talk about the bond. What is a bond? A bond is an instrument that will earn you, you save something now, by, and government uses that savings to do capital work expenditure, and in compensation, you get interest rate on this bond. And we've made the interest rate attractive for, for, in order to make it really a viable and, and a good savings option. So we're talking about 5% per annum for four years. So each year, you get 5% on this bond. Imagine you put down $1,000 of your salary saving. At the end of the year, you will get 4% on that, 5% on that, which is $50. Next year, 50. Third year, 50. Fourth year, 50. At the end of that fourth year, you also get back the $1,000 you save in cash in your deposit, in your account. And to make it even more attractive, to give you a liquidity, a flow of income coming in, because you, you want to do other stuff, uh, but, uh, you can see money coming in, the interest is paid semi-annually. So instead of waiting to any year to get the $50 on the $1,000 that you save, you get 25 in six months, another 25 in the next six months, and $25 for eight six month period till you get your 200 and then you get back the principal or your $1,000. Um, and, and to make it even more attractive for the worker, given the maximum benefit of the savings, government is waiving the withholding taxes on the interest. So usually, if you invest in an instrument, even your deposits, is the interest you get from your savings deposit or for a credit union deposit or from investing in any bond or any instrument, the interest earned attracts a tax. It's called a withholding tax. And it's taken out even before you get the interest. For this instrument, there'll be no withholding tax. So in my example, the $50 in any year is truly interest. Nothing is taxed from that. The bonds are fully tradable. More so because by design, the worker gets 18 pieces of 18 bonds. In July, piece of your salary is in bond. In August, pieces in the bond. In September, pieces in the bond for the next 18 months. So you have 18 bonds that you can sell, piece, eat, any one, a collection of them, all of them, at any point in time within a four year period. At the same time, we've worked with credit unions, we work with other financial institutions that they have expressed, particularly the credit unions, a strong interest to buy these bonds if any become available because you can only get them through a public servant giving it his to invest their funds in. And it makes sense for a credit union to do that. Because right now, what do credit unions invest their money in? The money you put in credit union, they invest it somewhere to make some money. They only have really banks, deposits, earning 0.15%. So if they can get their hands on some 5% interest earning instruments like this bond, it makes sense. They benefit, you benefit as a member of the credit union because you get increase in your dividends and everybody benefits. So the market is liquid and fully tradable, helping us create a secondary bond market. These bonds are protected. You remember back in the last debt restructuring, everything was on the table to restructure in terms of debt obligations, but not the saving bonds that were issued by the central bank up to that period. Because recognizing that those are held by the majority of individuals and people just earning a salary. So those were protected. And these will also be protected just like that. But in case anyone within here, short of my voice, think that I'm saying that we expect to restructure anytime again, let me rest assured that is not the case. I will tell you why. 
And let me digress here for a second to tell you why. Bear with me. There's a reason why countries go through debt restructuring once in a lifetime or so, but why they do it. Just like why an individual do it. An individual will go to a bank and say, listen, I need to look at all the loans I got and give me a consult. They don't help me here, sprout me payments, help me out. Why? Because they're under stress, they can't make the bills. Because countries do. We restructure the debt because it, the situation is unsustainable, cannot be maintained. And why? Because what I refer to now as a force, a four horsemen of the economic apocalypse. You know, you talk about the four horsemen in the Bible, the apocalypse, in Revelations. I do read my Bible. <laughs> but those four horsemen exist in the economics too. You won't read this in the economics text, but this is by Kevin Greenwich, though, to help we understand what we're talking about. And when those four horsemen exist together, you have to restructure that. Believe you me. Let me tell you what they are. One of the first horsemen of the apocalypse is the reserves. When a country don't have any reserves, or not enough reserve to maintain its lifestyle and pay bills and things, it has no choice but to exchange rate go into trouble. When we start this program, work program in the beginning, and I repeat myself, I may have said before, we have $420 million in reserve at the central bank. About four weeks of imports. We had a bill, a, a loan bill coming in July for Credit Suisse. I think it, I can't remember how much it was, about 100 million or something like that. My memory, I don't remember exactly. But in addition to that, we have our payments coming in November. And worse yet, we were going to Harris in the season. But forget all that. Think about it. If COVID had come at that point in time, well, my grandma used to use the phrase, crap will smoke your pipe. If you don't know what I mean, is if a crap will smoke your pipe, you're in real trouble. Because you mean you pipe on the ground. We fixed that four horsemen of the apocalypse. And reserve, I just explained to you, now stand about two billion by this evening, it will be two billion. But that's not enough to make you re restructure it. Because back in the early 70s, when we had the same problem because of a shock to prices, it was like a famous oil oh, shock at that time. We went to IMF, but we didn't restructure because only one horseman had come calling. We were out of reserves then too. The second horseman of the apocalypse is the fiscal position. Between 2008 and the response to the crisis, then after that, perhaps not having necessarily the right policies to respond in response, the deficit went, start, the government started having fiscal deficit averaging 7% of GDP. For those who don't know what GDP is, what 7% of GDP? That is about 700 million on average every year. Now, me and you, if we got we finances and every month, our income is under our it's less than our expenditures. It means you gotta get debt for somewhere. You're borrowing from somewhere, boyfriend, girlfriend, a bank, somebody give you money. Come the same thing. That's debt. And it also means that if the boy don't give you money, you got one final option to pay a bill. What is that? You don't pay. You amount a raise. So you found that between that period, a raise went up to 1.9 billion in debt, a raise not paying bills, and the fiscal worsened to about 7% of GDP on average which means, literally, in layman terms, that of every tax dollar government took in, it had to pay 67 cents to service the debt that it had already got on the books, which left, what, 33 cents to do, pay wages, 33 cents of which wages must come out, of which equipment for schools and hospitals and, and computers and everything must come out, 33 cents of which transfers to get buses and trucks and sanitation trucks and everything must come out to a three cents on which you got to fix rules and do on the dollar. So you could see why there was no infrastructure development, even with all the best intentions of the world. And now we fix that because with deficits, we are running surpluses, small surpluses, and larger primary balances, surpluses to pay down debt. We've reduced the arrears from 1.9 billion to just over 200 million and government is paying its bills on time. So that horseman of the apocalypse has been fixed. He showed his head, not in the 76 went with the IMF, but in 1992. In 1992, we had the, the first horseman to talk about. We had no reserves at the central bank, and we had a fiscal on, uh, position that was basically unsustainable. Two of those horsemen, we went to the IMF. But we didn't restructure debt, because we only had two. The third horseman of the apocalypse is debt. Debt to GDP. 
Our debt in the beginning BERT program was 176% of GDP. I just tell you what it means. We were third highest in the other country in the world, and I just tell you what it means that you have less money to do anything, and we are mounting a raise. And with debt like that, nobody and then you anything anymore. So you can't do any development work. Our debt at the end of March still at 118% of GDP, following debt restructuring, following the fixing the fiscal, which means now people can look and say this is a sustainable path. You can manage your debt payments. We are now paying 22 cents on the dollar out of taxes to service debt as opposed to 67 cents. That horseman of the apocalypse never showed his head in the previous history of Barbados. Because of that third horseman, and because of the fourth horseman, who is the absence of economic growth, between 1992 and 2008, the economy doubled from 4.5 billion to 9.2 or 3 billion. Between 2008 and 2017, it didn't do anything. We didn't get any growth. That is the fourth, the fourth horseman. All four together, debt restructuring. The only way to fix itself is to start off, or start from the beginning. And that is why fixing all those four horsemen meant now that our economy is stable. That's why we just passed the IMF board. Uh, we were stable with the outlook that they are approved of. That is why Moody's upgraded, but not upgrading, maintaining Barbados outlook as stable while downgrading other, other countries. And that is why we expect that in four years' time, we will be able to not only the economy will grow in such a way because the investment in capital, etc., that repaying these bonds is not, is not a problem, and why we know that this will not be a debt restructuring coming. So, say all that, say this, these bonds are protected by default, by choice, by every picture of debt restructuring. Um, the other thing I should mention too is that when we restructured the last debt, we wrote into the contracts, well, we wrote into the contracts in negotiation with that if. Barbados ever miss the external debt payment or three reviews the IMF or ever restructure the one point one billion that we will save every year from that every year into the medium term, we will have to pay it back. An untenable, even an, an unimaginable position. The final feature of this bond is that you have early redemption fee. So after feature, sorry. So after Two years, you, government stand ready to purchase the bond back so anyone want to give them out, which I'm sure wouldn't happen. So let me give you some examples. Um, before I give you an example, let me actually talk about how much percent coming out. Now, let me stress, this is on your net salary, not including um, allowances or travel or anything like that, and after pay and an NS is taken out. So let's say after pay and an NS is taken out of your basic salary, if your earnings is less than 36 thousand per year, which is about 300 per month, then you will get all your um, salary as cash. Zero will be allocated to you by default. Because you recognize that first persons that are lower income tend to spend much more of that in terms of their normal maintenance, their monthly expenditure, probably have less to deposit. And also because you will hear soon that governments will own a housing support program, which many public sectors at that level will benefit from, so probably need to liquidity at the moment. However, if because your circumstances you probably got a mortgage or you maybe think you're at home or whatever, you want to save space, 200, 300, you will just indicate that at the time when, and we begin in July, you will get opportunity to state your preference by form, you indicate that. So you're not excluded, but we're not concluding at the moment in terms of meeting our target. If you're earning between 36,000 and 50,000, which is between $3,000 and $4,166 per month, I mentioned again, make again, net of pay, YE, and taxes, you will get 93% of your salary in bond and 10% in cash. I mean, 7% in cash. So uh, if you work for $1,000, it means, well, in 1000 we mean that range, but you do the math. And if you are in the range between $50,000 and 100000 a year, which is between, in terms of monthly net, between $4,166 and $8,333 per month, then you will get 88% of your salary as cash and the other 12% as a bond. And the last bracket we're using is if you work for more than 100000 annually, net of PAYE and NAF, 
or monthly greater than $8,333, then you will get 83% of your salary as cash and 70% as a bond. Do you see that allow us to achieve the balance here, fiscal savings as um, part of the, within the fiscal container? That 10% or that $100 million that is paid in bond is not recorded in my fiscal space container. I repeat, fiscal space container. And therefore, give us the space to do the capital expenditure we want. Let me run you through an example. And I recognize already that this is difficult to see. So I will switch to an Excel file that allows you to see a little better. Suppose you're in the Z scale earning $48,756.58 a year, that's gross. When you take out, and this is not your allowance, nor your, your, um, your allowance, nor your travel stuff. When you take out taxes at NAS, taxes pay way out. So this is your take home after your statutory, your statutory deductions, statutory deductions are taken out. Your take home. You would this person, let's, say, let's put a name on the Mary, Mary, Mary Lou. Mary Lou, the public sector, working in the Ministry of Air, will take home $3,397.09. Mary Lou took that home in March, in April, in May, and she will take it home in June as a check, cash, in her deposit in the, her bank or union, credit union in Boyle Street. Our proposal then is come from July. Mary Lou will take home the exact same amount. However, she will get it in slightly different form. She will get 97%, which is a $3,159.29. She gets that as cash directly from the treasury in her bank account in Broad Street in the credit union. And then Mary Lou get the other 7%, which in this case works out to $237 and 80 cents, she get that as a bond in her bond account at the Central Bank of Barbados and a statement coming explained to her that you now have a bond account open in your name and that bond account have a bond to the tune of $237.80. As the two, Mary Lou has her cash, truth, number one. She has the same amount. Now, that's July. In August, what happened? Same process. Mary Lou gets 3,159 is cash, and another bond into her bond account for the tune of 237.80. Now Mary Lou has two bonds in her bond account, totaling 470 what five dollars and sixty cents. July, August, September, third third month she's in this program. Mary Lou continues with her same instructions. She got third bond on her money bank. So every month, Mary Lou getting her full salary, but she's getting the majority of cash on a bond. After 18 months, Mary Lou would have saved in her bond account at the Central Bank 18 bonds totaling $4,280.33. That's what she has saved in her bond account at the Central Bank. She will have been earning interest all along because by, I remember she, her first bond went in when? In July. That, by January, that bond was in there for six months. So it's time to get some interest on that bond. And the bond, she will get interest on that bond for six months, but the one she put in in August will be in there for five months. So interest two on that. And the one she put in in September were in there for four months. And November were in there for three months. And December, two months. And the January went one month. So she gets in all oh, that interest lump to sell. That comes to $20.81. But then July 2021, she gets an interest for bonds in there up to 12 months. So she gets $56.92. And we continue paying interest every six months. When we add up all the interest, Mary Lou will get over the four year people period, it's $856.07. She put down $4,280 and she gets 800 on top of that. Now first, I just give you one truth. It's not a salary cut, 
show you clearly you get the same money. Let me give you another truth. It's a great savings option if you can afford to save. Because if we think about the alternative, if Mary Lou had taken that $4,280.33 and placed it in a bank, given the interest rates in the bank, the interest rate in the bank is now 0.15% and even lower. Mary Lou would have earned on that $4,280, $4,280, for keeping her money in there for four years. But that's the best thing. She ain't getting that. I'm sorry. Bank fees kicking. Every month she would have, char she would have been charged $5 in maintenance fees. And that total over the year, $240. So Mary Lou owed the bank $214. And by the way, I ain't count if Mary Lou decides she's going to go to a different ATM machine because that's a dollar. Or if Mary Lou decides one day she's going to bank to do some transaction, that's $3. So you can see that in terms of a savings option, this is a no-brainer. A great, a definite truth. Mary Lou saves. This is an option. And I can show you other skills, but I think the one example is fine. Because let me focus in now on the third truth. The first is that it's not, it's you get all your salary as before. The second is a great savings option. No, no if buts or ands about that. And the third truth is worker has full option. Let's look at that one. Suppose Mary Lou decide that, you, you, you see me? I like this thing, but the truth be told, my expenses every month, I don't have anything to put down. I have some, uh, the next set that I got from courts, I got three months with me on that. I got a car loan that I got from the credit union B, and I got another six months on that. I really can't afford to part of this program now. I may come in after, but I can't do that now. So Mary Lou says in her farm, I don't want to keep the bonds, I want cash now. It's my money, I need it now. <laughs> no problem, no problem. What happens? Ministry of Public Service, service sends instructing the treasury to pay Mary Lou how much? Not the 397, the total yet. It tells the ministry, it tells the treasury to pay Mary Lou $3,159.29. So Mary Lou will see that her buying account. It also sends instructions to the central bank to credit Mary Lou bond account with $237.80 and sell those shares, those bond, that bond, and credit Mary Lou account in Broad Street with the cash. Come pay there now. Mary Lou gone in Broad Street. She sees in her account $3,397.09. The difference is you see two different sources. You see one source coming from the Treasury, the 97% which is $3,159.29. And she see another source of income coming from the Central Bank for $237.80. Mary Lou got her wish. She have exercised her option and has been fulfilled. She have all her money in cash. But you may ask me then, what happened then? How do we achieve the savings in the program? It's everybody's in Mary Lou. Everybody want their money now for some reason, which is unlikely because giving this savings option can tell you the amount they are hot for this. But let's assume. How do we still achieve our, our objective? You remember my fiscal space container? What am I going to record in my fiscal space container in this instance? I will record in the fiscal space container only the 97% because notice that's what I pay her from the treasury in cash. I will also have a bond, but I don't go in my fiscal space container, I go in my debt container. So I still create the fiscal space even though Mary Lou says she can't afford to save now, she will take the money now. The difference is now, because the bond was issued, a bond still there, but Central Bank took her bond and saw that. So John Brown, who does not work in the, in the, in the um, public service, he's a construction father, he work in a hotel, he work on the beach, he does some other work, but he's not in public, but he's a bond. He now has the opportunity to earn the interest and savings that Mary Lou could not take advantage of at that time. I achieve, the government achieves, even in that scenario, the fiscal space and the money from the bonds to put into capital expenditure, and Mary Lou gets her option. 
So third truth it is truly optional. Mary Lou might say now three months, she done paying courts for the, the next set. So she now got a hundred dollars that she could save. So Mary Lou says, no, that was July, August, September, early November, Mary Lou tells the Ministry of Public Service, aha, I'm gonna save a hundred dollars now in that bond. No problem, Mary Lou. The Ministry of Public Service sent instructions to the Treasury, pay Mary Lou how much? Say more, are they telling them more, telling the pair? $3,159.29. It sends instructions to change bank saying what? Same thing. Correct Mary Lou account with a bond of two thirty seven eighty. But this time it's still selling to St. Central Bank. Sell all. It says Ministry of Public Service to Central Bank. Aha. And sell one thirty seven eighty. So that her balance should be a hundred and give her the cash. Mary Lou goes and in November pay a day to the bank. She sees her $3,159.29 coming from the treasury. And she sees $137.80 coming from the central bank. And then she gets a statement from the central bank saying, your bond account was zero. Because remember the time she was getting all in cash. Opening bank zero, added to $137.80, sold, sorry, added, added to it $237.80, Sold, 137.80. Remaining, 100. So she have now saved 100 dollars, and she received all the others in cash she wanted. That 100 dollars, Mary Lou, saved in November, will pay her six uh, every six month, five percent on it, which is five dollars. It's only 100 dollars at more, but every penny bank is getting 0 0.15 cents. So you still get that five dollars every six months. That's eight five is forty, so she can about four. My mask off, are you right? Anyhow. And at the end of four years, November come, she get about her hundred dollars. Mary Lou could change it in January and say, Well, I done pay for the car loan at the credit union. So now I can take full advantage of the savings. I don't need to sell my bond. And the th in the process carries on like that. So from that perspective, the third truth, let me repeat the first truth, full salary every month as before. Second truth, the fiscal space is created. Bonds are fully tradable. Third truth, workers have every option to exercise through the choice. So the only other thing I can, I can mention now is in terms of the liquidity. So that if Mary Lou, every time Mary Lou converts her bond at the time she gets her salary, she gets it at $37 on par. She gets $37, 237 with 237 on par. But Mary Lou could take her bond at any point in time and sell it to an individual. Mary Lou could, could decide to sell it to say John Brown or another public sector worker. They arranged between them. They would give her exact money for it or maybe a bit more than a dollar because another fellow are willing to offer more. So let's say Mary Lou had $1,000 and she wanted to sell and someone is willing to give her 1000 for it. But they would keep it earning remaining interest on it. They simply download the form from the central bank, filling the details for both parties, have it notarized by a public figure like a priest or something to say, well, this is a credible transaction. No one is being forced to do anything they don't want to do here. Upload the form and then simple name it, change the title, voila, finish. Mary Lou may also take that bond to her credit union, which is also a very good option because here's the thing. Mary Lou can tell the, say to her credit union, cash my bond and pay my mortgage or do what or give me my money. Credit union is more than willing to take that money because they earn interest on that too. So they take the thousand from her. They take the thousand from her, give her a thousand in cash, and then they are now earning 5% on that, which improves improve their revenue, improve their shares, and Mary Lou, John Brown, who is a member of the credit union, have improved dividends. So it's fully tradable in that regard. I will stop here now and give everyone an opportunity to ask questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ganesh. Any indication about Zoya? Um, okay, so you've heard the presentation. This time is now yours. Um, so just make your way to the most 
easily available microphone. And once you catch my eye, I will identify you. You may want to say your name and the organization or the unit from which you come. That decision is optional. I am further advised that apart from the numbers here, we've got 115 people following us on Facebook and 405 on other social media. So, the floor is now open to you. If you hesitate, I will invite, it. okay, I see the brother up front. Somebody is coming to your assistance. It is a very small device that turns it on. Yeah. Alex Eiffel, Barbados World Authority. Now, I know the program is organized to uh, make up for any in, uh, fall in income coming in due to the impact of COVID. I, I know you would have done modeling. How long do you, ex in your modeling, how long do you project COVID to impact the, tour the tourist sector, which was the main source of income, and therefore impact things like your c cover for your 21 weeks of food and pork cover, things like that. How, how long do you project this to impact? Yeah. Your how long do your model go ahead as far as the impact on the tourism sector would be? And how will that impact you, uh, the money coming into Barbados? to avoid any impacts on the public service. Thank you. You have to remember that we have, like everyone else, no idea as to when the therapeutics or the vaccine will come. Like everyone else, from January, December, they were saying 12 to 18 months, which puts us to the middle of next year. Having said that, you would appreciate that different protocols have been developed and different countries are looking at ways to be able to reopen because what the facts are showing us is that you can live with COVID, most people, um, but there are some who are peculiarly vulnerable. It's a small minority, very small, but the point is, it's human life. And we've taken the position that we are going to work quickly, but credibly to safety. Um, I say that because some Caribbean countries will be opening up as soon as tomorrow. Okay, Antigua, I think, is due to open up tomorrow and to start taking regular scheduled traffic. I suspect that their initial traffic is going to be more people coming home. Um, today, we have people coming home. So it just depends on the, 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 the words that people use to describe things. Our models, however, look at a 25% decline, a 50% decline, and regrettably, a 100% decline. Because a 100% decline is what it has been in April and May, effectively. And to that extent, that's why we are making these adjustments to the fiscal, as well as in spite of Kevin being very comfortable and we being very comfortable with the 21 weeks of um, import cover, the money approved by the IMF earlier today, the 140 million US, roughly 280 million Barbados, will carry our import cover probably close, certainly over 1.9 billion, whether we choose to use the whole amount there or use part there and part elsewhere. We now have options. So our planning 
takes into account potentially a moderate scenario, a severe scenario, and what can only be described as a tragic scenario. This morning I spoke to the heads of government of the African, Caribbean and Pacific countries with the UN Secretary General and Prime Ministers of Canada and Norway and President of France, etc. And I made the point that the scale of economic decline that our countries who are tourism dependent in the region will face is akin to the scale of economic decline suffered by European countries in World War II and in World War I. After World War II, they put together something known as the Marshall Plan, which was the US and others coming together to help rebuild Europe after such a devastating decline in the economy, but obviously a devastating impact on society and country. We've had some help, and in Barbados's case, I want to repeat that we're far better because our debt restructuring is out of the way. But there are a number of countries in the region who have even less fiscal space than us because they've not undertaken debt restructuring um, in, in the process. In the circumstances, I am reasonably comfortable that if we do the things that we are doing, that we have enough to start. But both ourselves and the International Monetary Fund recognize and especially with the hurricane season having started, and you would note that we are on the 3rd of June, but yet we don't even see already, Cristobal, <laughs> and three days into June, ain't even done yet, 72 hours into June, ain't done yet, but you're down to Cristobal. But, so we are relatively comfortable with where we are, but we are cognizant that our worst spike or a storm or anything that can catapult you over means that we have to be eternally vigilant on our numbers, on what's happening, on our revenue, on our expenditure, in order to be able to make sure that we get out of this. I told the others before you that this is a case of needs and not wants, that this is a case of making sure that people are standing with their heads above water on the 3rd of June, 2021, next year. And to that extent, we need to make sure that everybody in Barbados can live and can eat. And that may mean that each of us got to do a little less in order to be able to carry as many people. Why? Because on 166 square miles, you can't have social implosion or breakout because too many people go suffer from it. Not true? So against that background, we're comfortable with where we are, but we are conscious that we have to remain eternally vigilant and that there are other options for assistance that may be available to us once we can make the case. Dr. Greenwich? And, 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 and therefore, we're not looking at you again, hopefully, but hopefully we will be able to get the outside world working with us in such a way to provide the support that the Caribbean, which is the most tourism and trade dependent region, one of the most, if not the most, in the entire world. I'm not sure if that answers you, sir, but if you want to ask a follow-up, please feel free. If Dr. Greenwich wants to add to it. Okay, the, we want to get as many comments, as many questions, as many answers as possible. So do not feel intimidated, do not feel inhibited. This is your meeting, this is your moment. I recognize you, ma'am.
afternoon. Um, during January, Good afternoon. Normally, in January, national insurance and national insurance usually gets it, its threshold up. And Madam, talk into the mic, please. No, 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 no. Right. Okay, stand by you. You need some assistance, so it's on its way. Um, normally every January the national insurance threshold usually go up if this boss program and we already will be taking money out to save how how is that gonna is that gonna be shortened or we will stop it or it will continue to go up Repeat the question, but it has to do with whether the national insurance threshold increase will impact on this. Yes. No, it is, it's not going to. It has nothing to do with this. So when in January, the national insurance threshold will not be moving then? Because it moves, it has been moving every January for the longest time. And we are not going to have the new taxes during this program or anything like that? I, I, I don't think you're going to, but I have told you and uh, others that I don't make them kind of promises because I am Jesus. And I'm telling you that I will never disrespect the office that I hold by saying that a Minister of Finance will never have cause to increase fees or taxes because you never know what will happen. But it is not our intention to do so at this point. Certainly not our intention. Having said that, on the NIS point, there's nothing to do with this. The NIS threshold goes up to be able to determine what your insurable earnings for national insurance are. And they do that, as you quite correctly said, on an annual basis, usually. But would they, would they not um, impact on our pay home pay? With the new boss program? Hold on. Remember, Dr. Greenwich told you you can opt in or opt out with what you can afford and what you can. So that if, for example, you find that you can't afford to pay all, then you can say, look. What's happening? No problem. You need to bring. We can't see anybody on that table. Um, yes, ma'am. If if you want to, you can opt in or opt out as you deem appropriate. So whether it is increased expenses, increased um, commitments, whatever it is, is for you to decide what you think you can do and would want to do. And if you don't want it, then you are more than free, as we've said, in order to say, look, I don't want it. I prefer having cash. Could you get this bond sold for me? And as Dr. Greenwich said, arrangements are being put in place for that to be effectively almost um, seamless for you. Dr. Greenwich? Prime Minister, I think uh, everything. Does the, just before you speak, so I think the Director General wants to make a comment. No, all I, I wanted to say, Chair, is that um, we just have to be careful with the national insurance threshold because you know that has been, is a program of increasing that every, every January. So we just wanted... You yeah, just that's, that, that's not a problem. Right. That's not a problem because at the end of the day, as I just told her, you can decide what you opt in and what you opt out depending on what your commitments are or have increased to be. 
So that's why this is ultimately very flexible. Right, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Chairman, uh, Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Greenwich, and General Secretaries, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Grafton Bess from the Barbados Water Authority. My, my question is, can, can, a civil, can a public servant shortly after retirement, say within the confines of this program, continue his participation in the BOSS program? Thank you for the question. So at the moment, we are, this is just at the moment for the public workers who are still working. If you work on through the program and then you retire, you can keep in terms of the bonds you have, you remain in your account. What we're going to look at now, and because of increased demand, we've had many requests by retirees whether they can have part of their pension in bonds or some of their gratuity. You remember I tell you that this still becomes debt, so we're still looking at the analysis to see how much more beyond those interest rates that we, I mean, those percentage conversion to bonds that we indicated how much more will we accommodate? So we need to see at least for the first month that we hit our target, and then we will see after that, and then Prime Minister will get back to, 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 to persons in terms of can we allow any or how much of pensions, etc. But the, the demand is quite high in this regard. Thank you. Any others? Um, do you have questions in the Zoom? If you do, I'll take one. Our first question for the afternoon. Is it possible for me to purchase my 18 months worth of bonds in the first month so that at the end of the four years, I will get my repayment as a lump sum and not have to wait for 18 separate payments? Uh, well, thank you. What we understand, there's a great investment deal, savings deal, and you are excited to get your money. We have to take it from your salary in order to create the space necessary for your net pay. But recognizing that the, and the appetite, and indeed we want to encourage and um, stimulate the, or you know, just Bayesian's appetite for investing. And in that regard, we will come in with another instrument shortly, partly to support National, uh, NAS um, in, in, during this period. It probably coined the pandemic solidarity bond and it be open to the general public. So you can definitely buy into that one when that comes along. Thank you. Any others from the floor? I see one, two, three, four, five, six mics. So everybody should have access. So I will hear another Zoom question. This officer requires some clarity. It is being stated that the program is a four-year program, but I'm also hearing about 18 months. Which is it? It is both. For 18 months, a portion of your salary you will save as a bond. So in 18 months, you will have 18 bonds in your bond account at the central bank. 18 four-year bonds, because each of those bonds will mature in four years from the date in which it was issued in your salary. So you get one in um, July, that will mature in July 2024, and you get back, let's say, 1,000, you get 1,000 deposited in your account in Broad Street. And during the period leading up to that, you've earned interest on that every six months. You get one in August, that matures in 2024, August. And again, every six months you get an interest. The one in September matures in 2024, septem in September. So basically, you've deposited a piece of your, your salary as a savings over 18 month period, and you, you get them back the face value starting in four years, over 18 month period. It helps you to manage your cash flow, helps the government to manage their cash flow at the same time. I recognize the 
president of the SAISA Trade Union, Mr. Dwight Miller, who has now joined the hate table. Uh, and he has a couple of questions. Good afternoon, Chair, and Honorable Prime Minister, and members of the Trade Union. Um, just trying to get some clarity in terms of the Right, good afternoon again. Just trying to get some clarity in terms of the um, investment. We, I see you have, um, in terms of if the public worker doesn't want to take the bond, that there's opportunity for the trade, the credit unions to take up that, that bond. Um, in terms of a union like SISA or even the Barbados Workers Union, um, is there opportunity for us to take up the, the bond as well? Uh, will we be able to register with the central bank and be able to take that, that bond as well as an investment instrument? Yes, yes. Any bond, any institution, anyone can register with central bank and we encourage it until opportunities of the, when bonds become available that public servants have given up. Indeed, the trade, your, your union can buy bonds on behalf of its people and disseminate the savings to them. So all combinations are available. In fact, it came out at a previous, and this is the fifth one we've done so far over the two days. Um, in the previous discussion, it was suggested that because workers are going to be getting a stream of interest coming in as savings, the credit union or even the union may want to look at a facility for them now to invest that savings in. Obvious one comes to mind, you have a, some sort of instrument, you, you, you get your interest payments, your interest from your workers, and you buy some more bonds, or the workers buy the bonds themselves. Um, my second question, I, I think you sort of answered it before. I have some queries from my members in terms of the 18 month period and the the four, year, the four year period of bond. We are obviously, we are subscribing to the bonds for 18 months, but then, uh, um, as they understand it, it's a monthly bond. So therefore, um, it, for 18 months puts us to, I think, December 2020, December 2021, but in essence, you only get the interest or payment for the bonds on a monthly basis, which puts the whole program, runs down to about 2025. That's correct. Not the program. The program is an 18-month program. It ends in 18 months. But then you have your bond account, 18 pieces of bond, each with maturing in four years from the time you insert, you get your bond. Right? So it's an 18-month program, ending in December 2021. That will be when your last portion from your salary will come to you as a bond. After that, program is over. But then you have these 18 pieces of bonds, each individually a contract of its own, and will mature four years from the date in which you get it, and, um, and pay interest in the interim. That helps? Uh, yes, it does. But I just wanted to, admit, for clarity for some of the memory questions that I've been getting from my membership. Um, but in terms yeah. of the, the payback of the principal, that would not happen before 2025? No, the principal happens at the maturity of each bond. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let me explain one more time. In fact, this, has, this question has happened so many times that if you allow me to share my screen, and I, like, I want to do this so everyone can see, if I can share my screen for a minute, um, just for clarity. I might be able to share my screen. Just, just bear me for one second. Dr. Mm. Minich, I, I think- I, I'm gonna do it now. Um, I think coming in, implied in that question is uh, if the, the last bond is issued in December 2021, it follows that that series will mature 
four years down the road. Are you getting your principal monthly or cumulative? If you look at this example here, individual we may do, I make a little bigger. Can you see now? No. 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 Mary Lou put down her um, income, two hundred thirty-seven dollars. She got her bond in July, in July twenty twenty, right? That's the first month. So by by August, July, um, and if I, I I can put all the by August, Mary Lou, Mary Lou starts to earn interest on that two hundred thirty-seven. Okay. Let's say Mary Lou don't put down any more money. August, September. For 48 months, every, she will earn interest on this for 48 months until the end of 48 months. And then Mary Lou get back her $237 in her bank account in the bank. But Mary Lou may not stop there. Mary Lou may go now and next month put down $237. Now she earned interest on that. So in, in, in September, she earned interest. In October, in November, it goes right out. And Mary Lou, at the end of September, one month later, after the 40th month, Mary Lou gets back her money in the bank. But Mary Lou didn't stop there. Mary Lou put down another amount from her bank account. Kevin, let's answer him. You want to draw in principal? So your principal is coming at the end of the month, at the end of the 48-month period. 18 sets, of 18 sets of principal. In this case, you will see this is when, after four eight months, the first four eight months, the first bond that she put down in July matures. Mary Lou gets that in her bank account in the commercial bank or credit union. Plus interest on the other 17 bonds. And she's still getting here that, plus this is interest on the other 17 bonds that she has. So Mary Lou gets 254 in her bank account. The 239 she put down plus interest on the 17 bond. Next month come, Mary Lou still have 17 bonds with, um, with her bank bond account. And the 17th one that she put down in August 2020 this year matures. She gets that plus she still gets the interest on the others. And she continues to do that until the final bond will mature later at the end of the program, 18 months later. In a nutshell, you put down your bond over 18 month period. Every month you put down one, and in four years from July, starting in July 2024, the principal for the first bond matures. You get that in your bank account. Then August of the same 2024, the principal for the second bond matures. You get that in your bank account. All along, you're still earning interest on the ones you remain in your bond account. September, the third one that you have put down, September four years ago matures, while you're still getting interest. Is, is it clear up now? Yeah, you think so? Because we, we want to make sure there's zero doubt. Because you know no, you have to explain to other people. Every six months, so. Yeah, so the interest is paid every six months. You follow me? So in my example, you get the interest every six months. So interest will be paid starting from this July. It should be paid on January 2021, July 2021, January 2022, July 2022. Half of the five percent every six months, yes. It's designed this way, because usually with typical savings bond, you take the bond and you wait to maturity and get back your money. But we are trying to make sure they are tradable, so you people want liquidity if they want to go back in the market and buy a piece more that become available, you got some interest coming in from what you have already. We want to also aspire that you want to see some increase flowing in, so you can meet your monthly expenses. So this was purposefully designed to give you a flow of income as you wait for the principal to come back to you. Th thank you. Use the mic, use the mic there so everybody can benefit from it. Listen, listen to you now, I have a follow up question. Um, in terms of the optional ability of the, and the flexibility of the, of the scheme, um, I heard Donald speak about, let's say someone, based on their commitments, cannot afford to do, based on the ratios you put there, a 12%. Um, then is it optional that they can do an 8 or a 10%? Yes. Yeah, we said, so we had to say that. If you between under three thousand, you don't you you don't get allocated by default any bonds. You can say, well, I have liquidity, so give me two hundred bonds. That would be accommodated. If you need two hundred dollars, that would be accommodated. 
Now, if you're in the category, for example, where you will get 12%, and you say, well, I can't do 12% because I've got some other commitment, well, you can do five, four, whatever you want, and you can change it too. In the example, I say, after Mary Lou finished paying for her, then I said, at court, she had $100 extra. So she could put down for my month, say, seven, eight. When she stopped paying for her car, she had another couple of hundreds extra. So you can increase, decrease between zero and 100 what you want. Fully flexible in that regard. And uh, uh, you can check your bond account online. Yeah. With anything, you will get a bond account as you have a savings account. You can check it. You'll get statements. You can, you can do, because you need to know where you got in order to be able to sell and buy, right? Exactly. Um, and this reminds me to say that we'll be looking to um, break, put on, uh, let me stop sharing before the wrong thing come up. <laughs> um, financial literacy clinics starting as soon as possible um, throughout the island, throughout the country, because you recognize that for a lot of Barbadians, this is new, your whole concept of bond. But let me tell you, this is what you hear people say when you're letting your money work for you. Because believe you me, you put in your bank and your money in the bank, your money ain't working for you, you're working for your money because you are paying the bank to keep it there. So we will be doing these things over a period of time. And that is also why the central bank is taking such a lead role in being the intermediary, not only to make sure there's seamless conversion when you want your money in your salary, but anytime you decide to sell or buy, they are there ready with the framework to make sure that you can exercise your options perfectly. Any further questions for me? Okay. Um, yes, sir. Ms. Karen? Good afternoon to the head table. My name is Carl Boyce. I'm the president of Bargain Unit 1 at the Barbados Water Authority. I'm also a vice president of the Barbados Workers Union. And I have been there from the late days of the days from the late Sir Frank Lazy Walker. So end up come down. Firstly, I want to say that I I want to congratulate the labor movement for how they went about trying to fashion this with the government to make sure that it was something that we in the labor movement could accept. So I wanted to send abroad that we didn't lay down and die. We fought for the workers of Barbados. And I would like to thank the, 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 the leaders of the movement, but especially my general secretary, Tony Moore. Congress or anymore. And you will see that you have your water charter teams here in green. So Prime Minister, the General Secretary of Barbados Workers Union is well represented. Now, Mr. Greenwich, this is for both you, the Prime Minister and Ms. Moore. Cautious, Ms. Moore, no cautious, head table. You keep saying all the time about month by month, but you have not Set before it for those who work weekly and every two, week, every two weeks. So you still have to put that in the system so that those persons will feel that they're left out. Just a set before it. Conrad Moore, I want to say that we support this initiative 100%. But, but, we have some people who are going to accept the bonds willingly to assist in the sacrifice for the country because we know in the Barbados Workers Union that we have our brothers and sisters from the hotels who ain't working and ain't getting a cent. We know that there's all, all over 43,000 claims at the NIS. So we are willing to do our part to assist 
But we have some workers who are maxed out that cannot assist. So they are supportive, but they cannot assist in this exercise. Now, Prime Minister, we are assisting in this from the Water Authority's point of view because we really want to save jobs and help create jobs that our water bills can be paid. And we get our money. I would also like you to move a little with alacrity because I, I, you, you spoke in each session about refurbishing schools, the environment and clean up, but you didn't talk about carrying forward the water means so that the workers of water authority can be can see that there's an initiative going forward that can still be at work. So don't only speak about the schools that you want to refurbish, the roads to clean up, also talk about the means that we want to lay that will help the water authority so that if the bonds that you are selling is going to I call them selling is going to assist. We are in this together because we want to improve the country as well as the Water Authority. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. But I actually did talk about what it means. And far from that, remember I talked about the $55 million loan to the Barbados Water Authority that the government is facilitating. So fret not thyself, sir. It's critical. Vineyard project. Uh, well, it's not only vineyard, it's vineyard, it's the two temporary desal plants that you've taken over that have now to be connected. It is the mains on Highway 1 and 7 because once you break road, you don't want to be paving back road and leaving old pipe in there because that old pipe will burst again and the government will then have to spend a lot of money. So we're trying to coordinate the paving of Highways 1 and 7 with the water authority on the pipe. Um, as I said, vineyard is supposed to go from the pumps for vineyard will pump the water to Stuart Hill and Stuart Hill will then um, send the water to Bowmanston, which means that you've got to do trenching all the way from Bowmanston down. Last Wednesday, I spent the entire day all across the island looking at opportunities for water harvesting because we recognize that it is both a case of water for households and water for farmers too, because at the end of the day, food security is a key, key, key issue in this post-COVID environment, as we've already seen the disruption of the food supply. So I think you'll find that you have a fairly comprehensive program, and we've said start the commencing of the negotiations again on one or two other contracts as well as get the codes so that the smart codes, smart meters can finally become smart. Because I don't know how a water authority buy meters, spend that kind of money, and the, and, and, and the meters are still not smart and cannot be used to read. So trust me, we're with you on this one. OK. Regarding the weekly and by weekly people, Carl, that question was posed in earlier sessions as well. And the bond is a monthly bond, but if you receive your wages weekly, the necessary adjustments will be made to facilitate those deductions. So it will be the same bond on a monthly basis, but broken down. Um, as it relates to... Right. Um, Prime Minister is reminding that the majority of people won't get it because of the qualification, um, that there is the $3,000 and more. But of course, if you have the ability to, you will be able to opt into the arrangement. As it relates to people, though, who have, who are maxed out, as you put it, I know that, for instance, we have a, a situation at Water Authority where we've experienced that even as we rolled out a medical plan five years ago. So we know where the challenges are and the commitment to the plan in principle is, is one that will not compromise our ability to work with the Water Authority to manage those specific situations where we know that individuals are a challenge. Mr. Halliday is here 
the HR, your HR director is here as well, and we will work through the situation. So the program, committing to the program, would not compromise because it is not intended to compromise your ability to live when the month comes. Sir? David Sandiford, Rural Development Commission. And let me point out that we have a relatively aging staff there. We, only got, we had two persons who retired during COVID. It may not be a difficult sell speaking to the persons who have lots of time left. Um, myself, I call myself the young elderly. But we have at least three or four persons who would be looking to retire within a period of less than 18 months. Now, as the, I should also say the representative for the Barbados Workers Union and the Rural Development, it would be incumbent on me to try to sell the program. However, in terms of selling it to a person who has perhaps a year left, um, this is, well, perhaps Mr. Greenwich or the right honorable PM can address this. How do you sell it to somebody who has 18 months left or 12 months left to work? Do you get an intern? Otherwise known, AKA Cuban. <laughs> um, it's up to them. If they want to invest, they can. If they have other commitments that stop them from investing, David, they don't have to. But quite frankly, it's still open to them. Suppose they had only nine months left instead of 18. They could do it for each of the nine months. Okay, but they would end up with nine four-year bonds instead of 18. What we haven't investigated for people yet, and it was raised yesterday, but obviously we've had no time to have meetings on it, is whether persons who want to take some of their gratuity in bonds would be allowed to do so in this bond. And we've committed that we will review it in the same way that we know that equally the port workers, the Grant the Adams Airport workers, Caves the Caves of Barbados workers, um, most of those SOEs like that may not be central to this program, but we need to find a way, if possible, for them certainly to be preferential buyers from public servants or other SOE people who are not taking up their bonds. And secondly, to see whether there is enough space that we can do it because in truth and in fact, um, in some instances, uh, there may well be some wiggle room, but we want to keep our debt at a certain level as we explained, I think it was in the previous session, because ultimately we intend to repay every cent. So just because you can borrow, doesn't mean you borrow everything. You borrow according to what you can safely pay back. So that's why you see us saying on all of the people, because they're members of the private sector, members of SOEs, all kinds of people who say, look, we really want a piece of this now. So we're trying to make sure that we do it responsibly, that we cap it still, and Dr. Greenwich can speak to that. You heard him talk about the four horsemen of the apocalypse and the one of them being debt, debt management. We're trying to make sure that it doesn't bunch in a way that is uncomfortable for us to repay. Because remember, sometimes study yourself at home. You could have all of your bills bunching in January, and you feel as though, well, what are you really doing? When you now come out of Christmas, and I go look for everything to pay in January? Or if you've got sense, you can then say, look, let me stretch that out. Give yourself some breathing room in January. Pay one of the things, but put the rest down in March, and then the others in May. So you start to spread it out in order to meet your obligations rather than everything hitting you with one, one lash. Okay, now there's some people who are opposite. There's some people who say, boy, you see me, I can take everything one time. <laughs> and then the other 11 months is mine. Depends on who you are and what your personality can tolerate. Yes, ma'am. You. <laughs>
Good afternoon. Uh, most of my questions have been asked. So I wanted to know, one, is, it, is, is the four-year period like a test period? Or after the four years, will it continue? To be clear, just in case you want to follow up before you move, the four-year period is a period in which the bond will be existent and mature. So after that, the bond is retired. That's it, right? But I mean, if the, if the officer then thinks it was a brilliant idea, which it is, would they be allowed to continue for another four years? No, once the, the bond matures, you get the money in your, in your bank account. But then at that time, there'll probably be other there are probably other instruments, something out there that you're looking out to invest and put that money into. Okay. And then, um, like the guy that there was saying just now that um, there's certain persons that are below the threshold that they can't participate, so... No, they can participate because they can opt to have a portion if they can afford it, also be saved in bonds. So even though by default we didn't calculate the hundred million you're trying to get by including those persons, they can still opt. Um, and there were two reasons why we didn't include them. One, recognizing that persons with lower income probably spend a high portion of that income on their monthly maintenance. And two, the government is coming very soon with a own your home program targeted at those persons in that bracket category, and therefore they might want to have liquidity on hand to take advantage of that opportunity. So like, could, like two or more officers club together and form one bond? Uh, no, because in this case, two or so officers come together and put money and buy bonds on the secondary market from the central bank. But in terms of getting out to this salary is a one-on-one -on -one individual officer. Mm. In other words, you could come and buy it, but you've got to bring your own money to buy that if you're working together. Mm. Because this, what we're talking about in the boss program, is triggered by your salary. Yeah. But I think the fundamental point for persons under $36,000 a year, as Kevin said, we really, really want them who don't have houses to be able to access their own house in this country. Mm -hmm. So a house, just like a bond, is an investment. Secondly, as he said, we recognize that a larger percentage of their money under $3,000 a month goes in just taking care of things. Mm -hmm. So. We are not preventing them from coming into the program, but we're saying that if persons earning under 36,000 want to come into the program, put up your hand, get a form, and say that you want to do it. But we're not coming at you in the same way that we're going to people over 36 and go. Okay? Let me, let, let, me, let me give you an example before we move on. And there were questions like that. Someone asked me a time separately. Listen. I'm below that bracket. But let me ask you a question. My brother got some money. He can give me about $500 or so a month. Can I buy bond? I said, well, if, of course now, that's a between you and your brother. But if, the, if he's supplementing your income, that means you now have space to buy 500. And he said, so then can I transfer my brother's name? Again, that's easy. You go on the central bank website and you download the form and you, fill out and you can transfer to your brother. But what a person is doing is that your extra income they have because of their support, their arrangement outside, affords them the opportunity now that even though they're in that bracket, they Except can know. the way you describe it, your brother can get your money twice. <laughs> <laughs> because the brother giving you the money, and then you still transferring the bond to the brother, the brother draw it twice. So don't let your brother do that to you. <laughs> No, and then another thing, I heard someone saying that if you don't join, you might be penalized because it's associated with like... Absolutely no. You're not penalizing for not joining. For exercise, any option is no penalty. You can say none, all, some, part, now, later, later, now, not now, there's no penalty at all. Some, all, none. Okay. Any combination you could think of can be accommodated with penalties. Okay. Because any day what we're trying to do is your salary. Nobody trying to disadvantage you in your salary. We're providing a savings opportunity. And that's it. Mm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, at this time, I really, really think that we should allow the Zoom people to feel that they're part of us. Mm -hmm. So, I'll take a question. Thank you. Interest is paid every six months. This I understand. Can I access the interest and leave the principal? 
And if yes, how can I access the interest? Interest is paid every six months. You don't have to request it. You don't have to ask for it. It will come automatically to your bank account um, in your commercial bank or your credit union where you designate that you want your interest to come to. So you don't have to ask for it or anything. It's coming every month to you. Thank you. My other question, will the payroll of state-owned enterprises be linked to Treasury? or will a specific process be set up for SOEs? The, the, the details of that are being worked out now. There are some SOEs that get their subvention straight from central government, and there are others that don't. What we're trying to do is to meet with the players at Central Bank and elsewhere who will help us put in place a seamless process so that once persons are paid, that on that same day, as Dr. Greenwich says, you will see in your account the same amount that you want to see if you are not taking the bonds. And the only difference is it will come from two different sources, one from central government and the other one from the central bank initially. If the central bank is aware that you want to transfer to your brother, then they immediately assign to your brother and transfer one time that same day the bond. Make sense? Okay. Um, yes, I recognize. Um, so, our Zoomers, just hold on, we'll come back to you. And that is in turning to the last question on the issue of the state on prisons and payroll. Interesting enough, this program is so well sold that even people across the region are calling to encourage people to sign up and get part of the program. The question we have in relation to the payroll aspect of it is that based on what you are saying, the bond will become a deduction somewhere after tax and national insurance. The question would be what happened to the other downstream deductions? Since it's supposed to be seamless, will any moment downstream um, deductions be affected whereby I know I have to go, well, I have it deducted from myself, you don't have to take it from that bond account and go in. Okay, so the question is, the downstream deductions. So, so basically, if I understand the question, is that um, when you have your net pay, take home pay, then you have after NAS and taxes, there are other things that may come up like mortgage and different payments, which means that you may not have enough left to do the bond, even if you want to do the bond. That's correct. So maybe, let's say you have 4,000 remaining, and you're supposed to get 500 in bonds, but because coming up for in treasury may be other things, more than the, almost the 4,000, you may not be able to take advantage of that, if I understand the question correctly. And I think there are a number of approaches you can do, but first, you need to have a conversation with your financial institution. Uh, for example, let's say one of the things coming out may be a car loan for 300 at the credit union. Then you may want to say to the credit union, don't no, no longer take the money from my salary, take it from this account you got here, because they can put money into it every month so you can get it out. And therefore, that frees up that space on your salary that you can get your bonds. You may also um, want to say the credit union, um, instead of um, taking money from my deposit, I'm going to bring a bond to you and you convert for cash and mean you benefit. But the principle is simple. You need this, the, the bond is being allocated to you after NAS and taxes come out. And therefore, you need to look at your individual circumstances and try to make a decision how you can take advantage. It would mean having a conversation with your creditors, bank, credit unions, or whoever to say, instead of taking direct deposit from, or you say treasury selling directly to them, give that space and let you deal with yourself. So it's an individual kind of assessment of your position. Um, 
that you have to work on. Thank you. Um, sorry, sorry, just, just so I just I saw you, you say look at the little are you okay in terms of the response? I wanna make sure we all have clarity on everything. Not just answer. Um, I mean partly answering my the concern basically has to do with deductions that I may always have had to I would have already been deducted. What you are saying to me it sounds like the the bond account. It's not as though you're saying the bond account can, part of it can be sent to go and pay the... No, no, no. So let me, let me focus on, it, on what we're doing. You ready, you have your cash, your 4,000 in your hand. Um, in your, your due 4,000 after taxes and NAS, right? Let's say there were no other deductions. Let's say you choose to get 500 bonds. You will get the 3,500 in cash from the treasury to your bank account and the 5,000 in a bond to the central bank in your bond account. Now you say you may have a scenario where even though you got five four thousand disposable, the other deductions down the line that come out with treasury from your account do not afford you to to, to have five hundred remaining. Because if, we, if you get your five hundred a bond, your deduction is more than thirty five hundred remaining. That's it. What I'm trying to say is you have to find a way that you free up some space if you want to take advantage of it. By probably saying to your treasury, don't take out the amount for that car loan from you. I can deal with that myself. You could then take your bond to, to, to the credit union and settle it for that. Or you may find other sources of money you got somewhere to deal with that so you can take advantage of the 5% savings. But look at it. Let's say you just save $500 in this scenario in your credit union because you didn't have to pay your loan because it comes to your salary. That $500 only earns you 0.15%. So if you tell the credit union or the bank, take it from there then you free up your space on your salary because the bond must want your salary to be able to take advantage of the 5%. You got it? If you've got any further questions, I think we can talk, but thanks. Okay, Vincent, thank you. Um, I don't see any persons on the floor, so I'll go to Zoom. There is reference being made about the Ministry of the Public Service having responsibility for the processing of the option form. My concern is about bottlenecking. How will this process be operationalized to ensure that the process is expedited? All right, so first of all, we have committed, the government is committed to ensuring that this is a seamless transition. And of course, the only air reef envision that we, will, we, we may find any issues with the implementation and we want to ensure that that's not a case. So this last couple of days has been spent explaining the process, getting feedback, buying, making sure we're all on the same page. The next couple of days and weeks will be spent ensuring that we are in all claims. Prime Minister will talk about deconstructing and reconstructing and building it back in such a way, making advantage of all the technologies and Prime Minister is here, so she have already, I can say, committed to championing this process step by step with the Ministry of Public Service, all the economic advisors and all the tools at hand. So yes, that is the area where you know you have some concern, but rest assured, all will be done to ensure that this is as smooth a transition as possible. Thank you, Cesar. Good afternoon, head table. Madam Prime Minister, my question relates to the same bond issue. Um, what if the bonds are not fully subscribed? Is there an alternative for you to get the um, targets reached in terms of um, ensuring that you reach your um, fiscal target relating to the bonds? Thank you. I would have explained it in the program in the, when it was presented, but I'm happy you asked the question so others, again, an opportunity to repeat. And you know, at the end of the day, it really shows that this program is truly optional. Where it really doesn't matter at the end of the day, the choice that the officer made, we government will still get the fiscal space. But you, if every public servant, and you can see from the attractiveness of the product, that is truly a savings, 
and that this will not be the case. But if every public servant, right, just for a simple analogy, let's keep it simple, says, I want my money now for one reason, or I don't want bonds. What happens? You remember the case of Mary Lou? Someone just WhatsApp me baby and told me yesterday she was Mary Jane. <laughs> I told her she married. Mary Lou said she don't want any cash. And what happened? We issued Mary Lou 97% in cash and issued a bond immediately. But that bond was then sold by the central bank and Mary Lou got all her money in cash. But what really happened behind the scene? Government issued a bond for the amount that it was targeting, right? So if everybody said they want their money in cash, government will still issue 90% or 100 million less in cash and a bond, which allows it to do the capital works program and still satisfy the option of providing you with savings or it, because Mary Lou case, she didn't hold the bond in any day, she sold it and John Brown in public bought it. So the bond is still up there. Earning interest is John Brown, not Mary Lou. So that the fiscal target will always be, be met because the design of the product. The difference is who is making the savings. And in that regard, there's no incentive by the, by the government to really swear you one way or the other, except to say it's a great savings opportunity, but recognizing you want full flexibility. And so that's the, the brilliance of the product when all minds, all heads come together to create a, uh, such a saving product. You have a follow-up question? Come closer to you, Mike, buddy. How would then the government marry, marry the two in terms of the, um, the public buying them as opposed to the, um, the public servants sacrificing the salary 10%, 12%, 7%? So, so it's not a sacrifice of any salary. You realize that? It's not a sacrifice of any I know, salary. I know, I know What, okay, hold on a minute. What is the public servant option opting for? He or she is opting, do I want all of the bond, none of the bond, i.e. I want cash, 50% of the bond. In truth, in fact, they're opting whether they want to save some of their money now or not, right? What I'm saying to you, if they choose, if a particular public servant choose not to save their money as a bond, the bond will still be issued and sold immediately, and that public servant given his cash. Another Barbadian individual, company, credit union, financial insurer will hold the bond and make the savings on it, right? And the end day, government will still have a fiscal space because they only pay a, a smaller portion in cash. That goes towards capital works and development. Am I, is it okay? You still look you, as though you're you not quite little, satisfied. Boss, you still a little puzzled though. You sure? All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions from the floor? Sister Zoom. We have a question from a public officer. Can persons who have a government car loan use the bonds to service this loan? No, unfortunately, no. You will have to cash in the bond and get the money and pay your car loan. Okay. And may I go ahead with one more piece? Yes, you may. Seeing that the pay is split between source, two sources, Will the bonds affect the calculation of pensions and maturities when you retire? Absolutely not. 
Because remember, it's just how you're taking home your net pay. Your pension, your charities, and your gross salary, and years of service, and that's, that's unaffected in any manner. Thank you. Members on the floor, this is your time. Do we have any other questions in the Zoom? Many questions in Zoom. Go, go right ahead until I stop you. <laughs> While I understand that there will be no withholding tax on the interest from the bonds, will that interest be taxed as additional income when filing your income tax? No, absolutely not, because it's just interest. The only time interest on any instrument is taxed is via withholding tax, and that is zero for this instrument. So the answer is no. And just for clarity, we're still having a number of people inquiring about whether they can express their option every month, or they, can they do so for a block every three months or so? They can do whatever choice they feel like. It's fully, truly optional. You can see it. This is my position for the next five months. If it changes, you can change it within. Or at the end of the five months, you can say, I want more, I want less. Truly optional. Okay. To be clear, an employee's gross pay determines who would have to participate in the boss program. But the net pay determines the percentage to be paid as a bond. Also, how will the amount deducted as a bond be shown on my pay slip? So, eligibility for the program is working in public sector, being paid by public sector. So, it's not, your eligibility doesn't depend on your gross income. The balance we put below 3,000 on net income after tax, not including your allowances, is simply a matter in terms of getting to the aggregate. But public officers truly have options in any bank, how much they want. Now, in terms of calculating for, is, do you say um, income of taxes? Repeat the last part of the question. Or oh, how we look on your PSA. So we are still designing that, but. Generally, what we look is how it always look. You will see your, your gross salary, your net salary after taxes, and then you will see how much was sent to your financial institution and how much was paid in the bond. And if you didn't cash in the bond, that would be the end of that story. But you also get a statement from the central bank indicating your opening balance to your bond account, how much was added to your bond account, how much was sold, if any, and your closing balance for your bond account. So you get these two statements from the different parties. I, I know that I gave you a free run, but if I am to do justice to our position up here, I must periodically interject to ask, are there any questions from the floor or comments? Go right ahead, sir. Um, is the lady behind also indicating that she wishes to speak? Oh, okay. Go ahead, sir. Assistance is on its way. Right, good afternoon, Alex Eiffel again. I, I asked him a question that came on WhatsApp. <clears throat> this is the question that people seem to be afraid to ask. If there is a failure of this bond issue, what are the implications for employment in the public service? I, I would have thought that everything <laughs> we will say is the key to you, that, the, uh, that I, I don't even know what you mean by failure. Once we all agree, and this is the implementation, it's not possible to fail because we will achieve the objective in any choice exercised by the public worker. We mentioned earlier the only area we can see will be implementation, and we give commitment that we're going to work to make sure that it's a seamless conversion wherever all options will be 
entertained. So it's not a matter of failure. There's, it, wasn't, it wasn't designed with any failure point in it. And, and I, I, again, I say, uh, if you're going to develop a proper economic product, it takes many iterations involving many persons. And again, I want to mention that the union has been, and the social partnership has been in for this in a very early stage. So what you see really reflects the input from all stakeholders involved. Thank you. OK, go again, yeah. Put back up the percentage options again, please. I can tell you, been done doing this for so long. So, if you earn between less than three thousand, you have zero in bonds and one hundred percent in cash. That's three thousand net of NAS and taxes. And if you work between this monthly three thousand and four thousand one hundred sixty-six dollars a month, you will get ninety-three percent in cash and seven percent as a bond. And if you work for between $4,166 a month and $8,333 a month, you will get 88% in cash and 12% as a bond. And if you work for anything in excess of $8,333 a month, you will get 83% in cash and 17% as a bond. But I reiterate, at any place along those bands, you can opt for less, zero bonds, meaning you want all cash, any amount. And we're also looking to see if we can entertain in excess of the band, but as we mentioned earlier, we have to do the debt analysis on that to make sure we say in basic terms, we don't hang our hats too high that we can't reach them. So we will come back on that and see what we can allow. But anyway, along those spectrums I mentioned to you, a public office can say less, no, some, now, later. You okay. Thank you. Those of you who are getting restless, just be aware that if I see your hands, I may interpret that as an indication that you want to speak, and I will call on you. Back to you. Oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> Danny, back. Somewhere else. Oh. So, care be warned. Good afternoon. My name is Gregor Raffet, Barbados Water Authority. I understand your. I can opt for the bonds. Say I opt for bonds. But yet, I have. A thousand dollars in the bank that's sitting down in the bank doing nothing. Can I purchase that in bonds also? First part of your question again. So, my, my name is Gregory Braffitt, work with Barbara's Water Authority. I am asking, I opt for the bonds. I am already taking bonds monthly. But say I have a $1,000 sitting down in the bank doing nothing. Can I buy that in bonds also? Yeah, I would say if you are already taking the maximum you can take from your salary, you got a 1000 saying down. My advice to you is keep your eyes open. Call Central Bank. Sign up. Buy on the secondary market. You might have colleagues who can't take advantage. Talk with them. See what can happen. But the answer is yes. See, but you've got to buy on the secondary market on the secondary bond market, right? Any? The most direct way is for a colleague to say he will let you take his. But if not, you take a chance when you go to Central Bank along with everybody else who is at Central Bank. Any other persons? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tisha Hines from CBC. Uh, first of all, a comment. I have quite a few colleagues watching on Zoom as well as on the other platforms, Facebook, etc. Uh, so they're asking about the questions. There are quite a few. My question relates to the actual process of opting in or out each month. I'm wondering if that is complete. It's still a work in progress. Uh, just so we're clear, are you sending an email? Uh, I know that um, Dr. 
The doctor talked about being able to say you can do it for the 18 month period or what have you, just so there's some clarity in the process of opting in or out and how it works on a monthly basis. Thank you. The principle is, and again, we're going to work through the logistics, but the principle is that before early in the month, way before payday, you will have an option starting, say, in July, asking you, these are your bond allocations, how do you want them? You want none, zero, half, whatever. You want them, and you can indicate one of the next six months, this position, or for the next um, eight months. And any way along, any month you can change it as long as you change it before the date that I look as sign. Um, while working through logistics, we will be able to say shortly if that's the 50 month, the 10th of the month, or whenever. But the principle is that you can make a choice anytime in the month once it got before that date for your pay day, and that will be honored. Okay? Thank you. Comrade Win Warren in his yellow shirt, in the yellow seats. I think I'm seeing to be technically sung. Thank you. Um, Dr. Greenish, I don't know if you're familiar with the smart train system in government service. I think what some public officers are looking at is their real situation. Um, I know you would have used the definition of net pay, but the reality of most public officers that have five, six, seven deductions on a pay slate, and what left back is their net. And I think your, your simplified approach is normally an ASP, I don't know if all state-owned enterprises do deductions because some people may be asked to go and do a standing order. There are some companies that don't do deductions for you. They just pay the NS and tax. You have to go and do the rest of yourself through a standing order. But in the public sector, a typical way slip can show five or six deductions, um, including all sorts of loans and commitments. So for persons in their mind, that's their reality. Although you are saying in a simple way, um, it is NAS less and less, less tax. And in their mind, what they're working out is what they actually get in the bank as cash after all these myriad deductions, four, five, or six. And if the net pay, for example, is only $200, um, would the bond push that out as a deduction? They're, they're working out if only the bond is 500 and my net pay, because there's a typical thing in public sector about incurring a lot of debt where people incur a lot of debt and merely what they left back, maybe to pay a light bill, a water bill, or go the grocery. So the reality for a public service, in terms of if you go to the smart train system, you will see so many deductions and you can see the net pay. I think what may be a wise run in all of this trial basis, even when you're consulting with the Ministry of Public Service, the various account section and the treasury is to do a run to see really what really you're looking at, that when you're implementing the bond issue, you got some logistic idea of what you're dealing with, because that is people's reality. The netting off of all of these deductions, not your netting off, their netting off and what they actually get in their pocket that goes to the bank. So I think some kind of analysis has to be done in the preliminary yeah. stage where you're consulting with the logistics and the central bank yeah. to see actually how many people are in the situation. I believe the majority may be able to contain something, but you need to look at that kind of analysis when you're doing a runoff for the treasury to see if people net pay, there's an issue with the net pay being less than the bond. I think that's some yeah. persons we, we have to do. We will certainly do that, but, but you just hit the nail on your head when you do your analysis, you know. Because you said to me that for a public officer, the many deductions, I think there for him, his net is what he get in the bank. And you said to me that that may be $200. So for that public officer, his decision is, should I leave his $200 in the bank or I want it in bonds? That's really your decision, though. Know? So whether the allocation based on the numbers here that you should put out 500, 500 and making a sense to you, all you need to do is say, whether, don't give me 500, give me 200 in bonds. 
You see what I'm saying? So if the officer knows exactly what he can afford based on what goes to the bank as net, that in my mind becomes what you would indicate you can save in bonds. Because if you leave it in the bank, you get 0.15%. But I also take your point that we also do, can do a dry run and see what it looks like in any day. Yeah, but, but leading to that other question then, if my net is 200, then that will go in bonds because that way I can afford. Yes. When you issue the instrument, are you going to issue to the full 500, obviously 500, and say, look. Okay, here's the beautiful this thing. This is a part of the target program. Yeah, so, yeah, it says yes again, because, you, what are you tell me your name is? Name? Your name? Ben Warren. From the where? Oh, the, <laughs> where are you from, man? <laughs> Uh, National Public Workers, WJC, okay. UPW. <laughs> but listen, look, if it, if, you, if it was your example, you were entitled to 500 in bonds. But when you check your net, you can afford two. Government still issues 500. Right. Central Bank sells three, so you're only saving two. So in your case, you will end up only having 200 in bonds, in this example. Okay. Right. But the beautiful thing is that another person will get the benefit from 300 that was sold, and government get the fiscal space of 500. You see, because some public officers were wondering if the other 300 may cut the five, it would impact on some other deduction happening. No, 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 no. Okay. Because you can say, okay. the, when they're coming back, only got 200, because really a four coming in there. Give me 200. Government issue five, sell three, give you two. Thank and you. John Brown buy the other three. Yeah, thank you. What he's perhaps should also be saying is that people should check and see because sometimes people don't remember what they agree to deduct and don't. <laughs> but that's a fact. Don't, I, I have been in public life for 30 years, so those things don't surprise me no more. Um, and I would just advise everybody just to check and make sure what they can truly afford. Okay? Um, remember also the percentages that we've put there are guidelines. Um, because once we made this thing fully tradable, et cetera, and worked with the unions to craft it, as you would know, the percentages are more guidelines because you can opt below or come in at the percentage. Okay? Thank you. I'm going to say just one to read. Thank you. Sorry, um, Chief. You and Premises said it hit on a very important point. That like any day we're gonna guide a worker's options of what he really wants to do is when he look and see any day where really am I buying an account? Why really left in my account? But presumably the two hundred dollars sits in the bank account or your credit union for the time being. Maybe he spent fifty of that. So one fifty is what he really want in bonds every month. So I think your question is a very good point which the Prime Minister reiterated, which I want to also stress. That every worker needs to do a kind of assessment. And check will really come down from Treasury to you and how much you can really have support yeah. us here. So thank you very much. Yeah. But what you could do that we are sensing is not necessarily buying at this stage. People are getting into the logistics of the program. As you said, you will look at that, you will do the consultation to work all logistical issues with the central bank public service. I think that's where most people um, are querying the processing logistics to ensure that everything runs smoothly. And I think basically that's it. Thank you. Oh, I thought the lady was approaching the microphone. Sister Zoom. An agreement or contract normally has the contractual terms set out. Will this information be included with the form or will a separate bond agreement be issued? Yeah, sorry for my distraction. Apologies. Could you repeat the question? Certainly. An agreement or contract normally has the contractual terms set out. Will this information be included with the option form or will a separate bond agreement be issued? Oh, um, I'm not sure if I get it, but let me explain. There's currently information. We have a document circling on social media. You can get it from GIS website, which details everything we've discussed as it relates to the bond. Government will also be taking um, legislation will all be given in terms of um, to 
remove any doubt, and that also is available as a white paper eventually. Um, so there's an abundance of information. It will also be the appendix to the, um, to the auction form, so you can see uh, it's actually page. Continue, Zoom. Has it been discussed with the banks whether they are willing to take the bonds issued in exchange for savings or liens already in place? If so, what are those considerations? We've had extensive discussions with the credit unions and they're willing to buy your bonds and apply them to any loan or um, facility that you may have or even give you cash because it makes sense for them. Um, you, you can engage somebody with the banks. Uh, these bonds are fully marketable and so it's quite, it's quite easy to, that they will want to pick them up. Also, given the lot of investment instruments for the banks themselves and the credit unions in terms of putting money in to earn. So that's absolutely um, not an issue. Any questions or comments from the floor? Minister Roach, just one question. The Prime Minister mentioned that there will be a cap. So then, therefore, the likelihood of a oversubscription is not possible then? If you have an oversubscription, then we're going to have to work out how it is distributed. But what we don't want to do is to borrow more than we really need because we're conscious we have to pay back. So I had indicated yesterday that while the initial target is 100 million, you would have heard Dr. Greenwich talk at times at 100 to 120. I don't think we can go as high as 150, but the debt management unit is working with us. Um, and since the questions were raised yesterday, we haven't had a meeting with them um, and, and, and the other Ministry of Finance officials. But we probably could just go over 100 as to how much we have to work out. Okay? Back to Zoom. And this is our final question. What plans does the government have in place to earn funds to ensure that when the time comes, public officers will be repaid? Um, I've, I believe we've went through this a number of times, but it's also good to reiterate so everyone benefit. When government invests, using, for example, the 100 million space a bond creates into the economy, into capital works program, etc., you are paying people, persons earn income doing these works in the private sector, economic growth, activity increases. Increasing economic activity and growth means that the revenue government get coming back wrong through the taxes, the base of the tax base has improved. You get improved revenue collections and your fiscal position, etc. This puts government in a better position to, to pay um, its bills later. And in these, these considerations are where we allow you to be in terms of economic growth, how soon we come out of COVID, etc. is why we've taken an approach in terms of looking at our debt limits and what we think would be a reasonable amount, given the fact that we may be coming later with another instrument, um, a pandemic, bond, um, and let you hold of where we will be. So there's no doubt that we, government will be in a position to honor these bonds when the time comes. I should say, even in the midst of the last debt restructuring, government honors the savings bonds. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, it seems, certainly from Zoom, and then by your conduct, it would seem as though you are satisfied and you have exhausted all of the possible commentary and questions that you may have wanted to ask save one.
man, I thought you had grown accustomed to the role of the night watchman, man. You gotta keep batting, don't stop. <laughs> okay, um, well, I hope that this does in fact represent a level of comfort and satisfaction as to what the boss program is about. I am going to invite my co-chair to make some further remarks, after which we will stand adjourned until the next session, which begins in just over half an hour. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone for your questions and comments, and that goes for the ones who are here present with us, as well as those who have joined us on social media. Um, all questions that are very, very useful. It shows that there is significant interest and that you're thinking the process through and seeking to ensure that you can commit or exercise whatever option when you receive the forms that will be presented to you sometime, well, before the end, before payday in July, for you to be able to sign on on. So I just want to thank you all for your presence. If you are members of the Barbados Workers Union, this is not the end of it for you because there will be opportunity for you to reach out to officers in your union should there be questions that you have further to those that were triggered here today. And I'm sure that those facilities will be available for other unions as, as well. So feel free on the leaving here, feel comfortable leaving here with the understanding that this is not the end of it. We are committed as your union leaders to walking through all the clarifications and explanations that you will need following this exercise. So thanks again, be safe as you leave. And uh, yeah, that's it, the meeting is adjourned. Senator Moore's statement was supposed to be the last, but Dennis deliberately waited and gave me a message. For those of you who may need transportation, paid transportation, the bus is at the front of the building. I'm not sure where the front is, but you can't miss a transport board bus. Thank you. M Mr. Chairman, I'm sure that you do not want to deny me the opportunity to tell the workers thank you for coming. I, cer thank I, you. I certainly don't want to deny you that opportunity. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Um, this is a difficult moment in our country's history but I truly believe that we can work together to get past this, and the key is keeping everybody's head above water. Um, so let's work together and make it happen. Thank you.